Hello and welcome to another Sugar Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to use Subtitles 4.0 inside Final Cut Pro 10. The recommended process is to render your final movie and then import it back into Final Cut Pro 10 and create a brand new timeline with that particular element. In here, I actually have done that exactly. But you can always create a compound clip if you don't want to render the final movie yet. Of course, when you create a compound clip and if you are creating the marker method of creating the subtitles, make sure that you do not have any markers inside your compound clip because they will disrupt the functionality and accuracy of the subtitles. Okay, so right here in uh, my timeline, I have my video clip. And the first thing that I want to do in version 4 is to go to the titles browser. Inside the titles, you can look for the subtitles sugar effects category, which is right here, and bring that title element into the timeline. Make sure that you put it on top, not on top of the video clip, because when you do that, it's going to try to replace the actual video clip. So you need to put it on the top track, on the top layer, if you will, of the actual timeline. When you do that, by default, the plugin comes with some uh, subtitles that already are included by default, so you can see how they were created. Make sure that you are looking at the title properties, and you will see all of the parameters right here on the right hand side. The first thing you'll notice when you apply subtitles to your timeline is that the canvas window now became crowded with some information about your subtitles. Let me turn off the visibility of my video right here so we can concentrate on that information box. On the top left corner, we can see the running time code displayed, also the number of frames according to that time code, and also in parentheses the number, the total number of subtitles included in the file. On the right side we can see the in color green the format that we're using right now. This is the user time code as a default from SugarFX and also the version of the subtitles plugin version 4.0. On the left and on the right in color blue we can see the data that is telling us about the previous subtitle with the in and out time codes, and the next subtitle with the in and out time code. That is very useful if you want to know how far away your previous and the next subtitles are from the actual current subtitle. In the center right here on top, we have the offset in color yellow, and that offset is only used whenever your synchronization is misaligned, so you can offset the entire set of subtitles, either forward or backward, uh, X number of frames. Right here in the center, in the middle, we can see the data for the current subtitle with the in timecode and the out timecode, as well as the text that was entered in the subtitle data. Down here below, we can see the result of the creation of this subtitle with the little box and appearance that is uh, set up in the parameters. Now, let's take a look at the parameters for a moment. So, you need to select the uh, subtitles element. And the first thing that you'll notice is that now we have a little button here that allows us to position or reposition our subtitle anywhere on the screen. This is the final subtitle that we're going to see whenever we are going to render this with the subtitles burned into the movie. If you move the subtitle all the way up, notice that the information box moves out of the way. So, to make sure that it's never disrupting the visibility of the subtitle and you always have also the display information, the data information of your subtitle available on screen. This parameter of the position can be adjusted also in the parameters, so you can move in the X direction or the Y direction. If you want it to be exactly on the center in the X, you just type in 0 on X and now your element is exactly on the center. You can also use the shift keys when moving your subtitles, so you restrict the movement uh, vertically or horizontally, depending on what is it that you want to do. If we look now at the parameters, we can see that there is an info button that is enabled. That is the one that allows us to see all the information right here on the canvas. So whenever you are ready to render, you can actually turn that off and they will disappear. And you only get the final subtitle right on top of your video. New to version 4 is the different functions that we can provide. As you can see, the select function parameter shows that we are in the subtitles import and create function. That means that in this function you can, as the name implies, import subtitles or create subtitles. 
The other function that is available is the export or data exchange format. So whenever you select the export data exchange, you will notice that the parameters, they become color coded in red and you will have only the parameters that are necessary to input the format, make some changes and then export to different formats. Here at the bottom during the export data exchange function, you can select different export formats. You can see that the common SRT or even our own user TC formats are included there. And new to this version, we can select the Final Cut Pro 10 markers export as well as the Premiere Pro markers export. You can use the subtitle data that is already input here and send it out to Adobe Premiere Pro as markers data in XML format. I'm going to change the select function to subtitles import create because when you select that, now all the parameters allow me to change many of the options for my font and the text appearance. So as you can see, you can select different types of uh, formats in here, as well as colors, justification, uh, stroke or shadow, and so on. You can also change the color of the actual box. So if you are planning to change that, you can do so in here and change also the size of that box, allowing for some spacing around the subtitles. The last category here is the time category of the parameters with the time offset that by default is selected as frames. That means that you can either move your subtitles forward or backwards in time. And whenever you do so, if you enable the info box once again, you will notice that the offset parameter will give you that information so you know exactly without looking at the parameters, only looking at the info box that your entire set of subtitles have been offset so many frames. So whenever you have your appearance the way that you like it, now it's time for you to turn off the information box and of course turn on the visibility of your video clip and then make sure that everything is synchronized correctly. If you want to see more of these videos, please visit our YouTube channel at Sugar Effects TV and let us know if you have any comments or questions about certain techniques or specific workflows that you would like to use. So until next time, thanks for watching.